blood or water. Exodus chapter 7 from verse 20 to 24. So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. As Pharaoh and all of his officials watched, Aaron raised his staff and struck the water of the Nile. Suddenly, the whole river turned to blood. The fish in the river died, and the water became so foul that the Egyptians couldn't drink it. There was blood everywhere throughout the land of Egypt. But again, the magicians of Egypt used their magic, and they too turned water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. Pharaoh returned to his palace and put the whole thing out of his mind. Then all the Egyptians dug along the river bank to find drinking water, for they couldn't drink the water from the Nile. That's the New Living Translation. The Egyptians couldn't drink the water from the Nile River. They had to labor hard to find good, clear, drinkable water. Except a person is a vampire or a witch or wizard, there is no amount of thirst that would make him or her drink blood. In fact, most people, born again or not, would rather die of thirst than drink any kind of blood or bloody water. In Leviticus chapter 19 verse 26, the Lord even told his people that they were not to eat the blood of any animal. There is, however, a kind of blood that a lot of Christians, especially church leaders, have been drinking without paying attention to the fact that that is what they are doing. Second Samuel chapter 23 from verse 13 to 17. Once during the harvest, when David was at the cave of Adullam, the Philistine army was camped in the valley of Rephaim. The three, who were among the thirty, an elite group among David's fighting men, went down to meet him there. David was staying in the stronghold at the time, and a Philistine detachment had occupied the town of Bethlehem. David remarked longingly to his men, Oh, how I would love some of that good water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem. So the three broke through the Philistine lines, drew some water from the well by the gate in Bethlehem, and brought it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out as an offering to the Lord. The Lord forbid that I should drink this, he exclaimed. This water is as precious as the blood of these men who risked their lives to bring it to me. So David did not drink it. These are examples of the exploits of the three. Again, that's the New Living Translation. This is a very touching story that presents David as a king, as a, as a king who was kind and compassionate. David longed for some special water. Some people who were not only very bold, but also loved their king, decided to risk their lives in a bid to satisfy his longing. But David saw beyond what was in the bowl that was presented to him, which was water drawn from a well. He saw inside that bowl the blood of the men who risked their lives to get the water for him. He knew in his heart that something horrible could have happened so that instead of the water he desired, the dead bodies of those men all blooded could have been brought back to their camp. A lot of pastors are not aware or perhaps do not care that some of the gifts they collect from members of their congregation are bloody waters. When Pastor Dylan's wife turned 60, Pastor Rick and some other top leaders of their church decided that members should give a gift to her. Pastor Ricky announced during a big program which had in attendance members of the church from different cities, states, and nations that an offering would be collected and the money would be given to Pastor Mrs. Dillon as a birthday gift from the church. That was a very good idea. After all, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Dillon had been wonderful spiritual parents to many. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 11, We have sown spiritual seed among you. Is it too much if we reap material benefits from you? That's the Good News Translation. Pastor Ricky's instruction to the church members was quite in order. The only snag was that he announced that because Mrs. Dillon was turning 60, the least acceptable amount of money people should give her was 60 in that currency. Anything less than that would be considered an insult on the woman of God because she wasn't a beggar. What Pastor Ricky seemed to ignore is the fact that among the people he was asking to give, there were probably some who paid for their transportation down to the meeting place and for hotel accommodation with borrowed money. Some were probably unemployed and struggled hard to get there in the hope that God's anointing on Pastor Dylan would break yokes off their necks and open doors of employment for them. 
Some attendees probably didn't even have that much money saved up anywhere. Why would anyone even tell people how much to give as a gift? What happened to 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7? You must each decide in your heart how much to give, and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. That's the New Living Translation. Many, ma many marriages are on fire because one party, being deeply convicted by their pastor's request for money, gave to the pastor or the church a gift that put a big hole in the family's purse, and the other party is not happy about it. And even when the pastors of these feuding couples get to know the cause of their quarrels, it never crosses their minds to return the money so that there can be peace in the home. How wonderful it would be if all servants of God, and in fact all Christians, could be sensitive enough to know when the Holy Spirit permits us to accept a gift and when He wants us to lovingly and politely refuse it. Sometimes the Lord may even want you to accept a gift and then repackage and give it back to the giver with something extra. But greed makes some people turn deaf ears to any prompting of the Holy Spirit along this line. If you are in the habit of talking poor, struggling people into giving to you, to your ministry, or to other servants of God who don't even need their money, you are drinking their blood, and you need to repent. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen.